Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Mr. President, honorable members, citizens of South Africa, it is an honor for me to be able to address you in this debate today. We've all heard the story of two cities. Today, I want to tell you the tale of two parties. I want to tell you the tale of a party of failure, a party called the ANC, who cannot keep the lights on, a party who cannot keep trains running, a party who cannot keep Transnet underpinning the economy, costing us a billion rand a day. A party who cannot keep our ports operational, costing us 200 million rand a day. A party who has given us the highest youth unemployment rate in the world. A party who knows not how to deal with corruption and state capture. A party who does not know how to grow the economy and create jobs. A party who can't even pay a SASA grant to the most vulnerable citizens of our country. This is a party of absolute failure. And then, of course, there's the other part of the tale. A party that gets things done. A party that is busy saving South Africa. Now, Mr. President, nothing demonstrates exactly what I mean by a tale that I'm going to tell you now of real people, not a fairy tale of fictitious tinswallows. I'm going to talk about real people. I'm going to talk about two young people. Mr. Danver Windvogel and Mr. Denver Atunis. These two young men, prior to the pandemic, finished matric in a small town called Franschuk, not so far from here. These two young men, coming from a poor background and a poor community, finished their matric and in a province that believes in opportunity in a province that believes in enabling people to reach their potential. These two young, in, young individuals, through a partnership with Belgium, went overseas and learned how to make chocolate. They came back here, they came back here, got 150,000 rand to get their business going, and started Belgian chocolatier company, Huguenot Chocolates, in Franschhoek. Two young entrepreneurs. Unfortunately, Mr. President, along came a pandemic and with it lockdown. But these two, these two entrepreneurs pushed through. They employed six people and they managed to get to the other side of the pandemic. Once they got to the other side of the pandemic, they were battling to pay their rent and that's where the DA-run municipality of Stellenbosch stepped in and enabled them with a piece of property at an acorn rental with a 10-year lease in the middle of the main street of a tourism mecca called Franschuk. But it wasn't long until load shedding hit. The lights went out. And of course, that's when the DA province steps in. We have an SMME booster fund. We have a fund for small emerging entrepreneurs to put solar panels on their roofs and batteries in their systems. It's not a fairy tale, Mr. President. I was at their business last Saturday while the country was in level six load shedding. The air conditioners were on, the fridges were on, the manufacture was happening because we enable entrepreneurs in this province. But you know what? The tale continues. I asked them if they sold sugar-free dark diabetic chocolate because I'm a diabetic. 
And they said to me, they normally do. But unfortunately, those specialist ingredients have been sitting in the port system for six weeks. Again, the ANC is failing those entrepreneurs, failing them dismally. Mr. Speaker, it goes further than that. The ANC doesn't just fail entrepreneurs when it can't provide power or an operational port. It is also failing towns. The President spoke here as if corruption was a thing of the past. The President spoke here as if state capture didn't even happen under his watch. But he also spoke about it that it was finished. Let me tell you about a town in this province that is captured. It's a town called Nisna. In Nisna, that town is run by the ANC, the EFF, and the Patriotic Alliance. That town has been captured. All of those entrepreneurs are now suffering. All of those citizens are now suffering. Do you know, Mr. President, in that town, I've just heard the previous speaker, Minister, speak about places that had no water. That place had water, but today it has no water. The people of Hornley have got no water. They haven't had water for five days. They haven't got sewage systems. The hospital is picking up more and more diarrhea cases. That coalition, and this is a warning for after the election, that coalition has captured everyone in that town. The water system in November had a body floating in the water system for 14 days. When they tried to pull the body out, the arm fell off. That's what the ANC EFF Patriotic Alliance thinks about those citizens. It gives them contaminated water to drink. The rubbish pile is bigger than this inside hall. The rats are the side of dogs. The cronies get the contracts. Total capture. Mr. President, I dare you to help us put that town under administration because that's exactly what it needs to happen. But Mr. President, when the ANC fails, the DA steps in. And the first area I want to talk about step in is a piece of legislation coming out of the Western Cape called the Powers Bill. And it's interesting how the ANC opposed this like anything. But when you ask those individuals standing outside with their banners, why are you opposing the Powers Bill? Because it's the failure of the ANC to create jobs, give you services. That's all we're trying to do. And that Powers Bill will create an enabling environment where we will go through the NCOP, the National Assembly, or even end up in a constitutional court where you are not able to deliver services to our citizens. Let me talk about policing. That's the first place where devolution of power should happen. And the Minister of Police says, not over my dead body. But what do we do in the Western Cape? We go ahead and start to deliver to the citizens where the ANC fails. So four years ago today, we had LEAP officers in partnership with the city in the highest crime rate areas of this region. Mr. President, five years ago, if I stood here, I would have had to admit that this region had the highest murder per capita rate in South Africa. We were the murder capital of South Africa. But without the Minister of Police, we put our LEAP offices in place. We deployed them to places like Delft, Hanover Park, Cryfontaine, Grassy Park, Kailicha, Philippi East, Nyanga, Guvuletu, Bishop Lavis. Mitchell's Plain, Lavender Hill. And guess what, Mr. President? If you look at the, if you look at the report from the, from the uh, International Security Studies, an independent report, and they map the four provinces with the highest murder rate in South Africa, Gauteng, KZN, Eastern Cape, and Western Cape. And of those four provinces in the last five years, three of them, the murder rate went up. One of them, the murder rate, came down. And that is the Western Cape. And if we can do that with 1,300 LEAP officers using data and evidence, imagine what we'll do when we force you to give us the power of policing. 
Mr. President, you should be hanging your head in shame. 27,000 citizens in this country were murdered last year. You should all be hanging your heads in shame. How unbelievably shocking is that? But in this province, we will show that we can make a difference. We give hope. We can do it where we govern, the DA governs, and it makes that difference. But Mr. President, I also noticed in your speech that you didn't have much to brag about in your last term. But let me tell you where the DA gets things done in this province. Let me tell you about this last term. We now can build a school for 500 learners in just 65 days. We are the only province with a back on track program where our learners on Saturdays are in class. These are, these are the primary school learners, thousands of them, where thousands of our teachers are in class, catching up, reading with meaning, thousands of them. We are the only province with a retention rate of 74%. In your provinces, Mr. President, the retention rate is 40 percent, measly 40 percent. But let me tell you about the health sector in this province. On the whole African continent, there are only three hospitals in the state that have robotic surgery, and they all happen to be in the Western Cape, one in George, two in Cape Town. It is in this province, Mr. President, where jobs are created. We have the lowest unemployment rate by far. When the Honorable Chief Whip of the Opposition was here, she mentioned a number. Seven out of ten young people in this country don't have a job. How shocking is that? Seven out of ten people don't have a job. In this province, eight out of ten people have a job. Last year this time, last year this time, Mr. President, I could talk about coming out of the pandemic, how many jobs were created in South Africa, and it was 100 and 69,000 jobs in the whole country. But the interesting number is that 167,000 of those jobs come out of this province, the Western Cape. And these are the facts, Mr. President, and that's why most of South Africa coming from the ANC-run provinces are coming to this province. They're voting with their feet. When I saw the Honorable Maboyane, when I walked in, I thought the Premier had finally decided to move to the Western Cape like the rest of his citizens. I actually felt like asking him, did you turn the light out before you left? But he didn't have to do that because you've already done that for him. But Mr. President, Mr. President, the tale of two parties. A party that has dismally failed the citizens of this country versus a party that creates hope, a party that gets things done, and a party that is going to make a massive difference once you announce the election date. A party that is going to save South Africa. We are going to do exactly what happens in deer-run municipalities and province across the whole country. So, Mr. President, so, Mr. President, announce that date. Bring it on. Thank you. Thank you.